My name is Anna Horwood and I'm an orthoptist by profession. I trained in, back in the 1970s, worked as a clinician for 20 years and then I went into research. My week breaks down into three separate roles at the moment, two of which are paid and one is voluntary. I'm uh, a clinical orthoptist at the Royal Berkshire Hospital in Reading, which I still love. I really love the patient contact and it informs the research that I do. I'm part-time research professor at the University of Reading and they support me in all the research activities that I do. And because of both of those roles, I'm now the research director of the British and Irish Orthoptic Society. And they all completely interlink. I think I'd always been interested in the research side of things. I'd been working at Moorfields Eye Hospital as one of my first jobs. And so there was a lot of research going on there. And then while I'd been studying for my teaching qualifications, I'd had to do a lot of the reading. So I realised that actually research is the stuff that changes things. So I think it's really important that AHPs in particular carve their own research route because the way that we do things may be different from the way that medicine or nursing or other branches of healthcare would do things. And so I think it's really important if you're the person doing the job that you know the questions to ask and that you actually ask those questions and find some answers and then tell people about it. There are a lot more opportunities than there were when I started and certainly at higher levels of research the NIHR, so that's the National Institute of Health Research, provides a lot of support. Good website, nice people on the end of the phone and mentors for when you get adopted as one of the, the people that they're supporting. At the lower levels you sometimes need to have somebody more local not many orthoptists will, or AHPs, will decide that they want a research career from the start, or they may be the only person in their department who does. And so the best way is to use professional networks. There's also an organisation called CAPA, which is a Council for Allied Health Profession Research. They organise a series of local hubs around the country and they'll organise research events. So that's a really good toe-in-the-water sort of helping. I would definitely recommend get a mentor and the mentor isn't necessarily your line manager. It's often somebody in another department, somebody in your profession. Most professions will have a mentorship scheme. I think mentors are really important because they say, well, why don't you do that? Or, of course you can do it. Or, if you want to do that, the next stage is go to do something. And I would have got where I am a bit faster if I'd had somebody guiding me through that. I think if you want to go into a research career, the qualities that a good researcher needs is not assuming that everything that you're always told is perfect, that things could be changed, things that people have told you we do it because that's the way we do it isn't necessarily the right way. It's questioning things, it's reading around it a little bit, it's finding out if there are other ways of doing it or saying oh there's a new technique in some other discipline could we use that so you need to have that inquiring mind and actually being prepared to say hang on a minute is that right sometimes you have to be a little bit flexible uh, there may not be a course where you're working there may not even be a school of healthcare anywhere near so for instance when i started in reading there were no ahp courses going on at the time so i got a research methods msc um, in the psychology department and so I found out once I was in the psychology department that actually the type of research that I was learning about was entirely applicable to AHP type research and so you have to sort of look sideways sometimes and I'm really glad that I did because I've got colleagues in a, another profession now that can advise me and have really helped.